believe that that plan we went to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We come to you tonight asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussions, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of our communities. Amen. Amen. Hmm? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for the approval of this evening's agenda. Resolution from Otagami County. And it's in regards to uh, legislation uh, to include enforcement officers, firefighters, probation, parole, and aftercare agents under special circumstances for battery. Uh, this will be referred to the Legislative Committee. We have a notice of claim from Jeff Maloney for damage to his vehicle referred to personnel and finance. Petition for zoning amendment from Gary R. Lurch in the town of Algoma, requesting a zoning change from B3 to B2 for a service station, referred to planning and zoning. And a petition for zoning amendment from Mike Clough of Beechwood Plaza Hotel, requesting a zoning change from Air 2, Air 3 overlay to an Air 5 overlay. And this is referred to planning and zoning. And that's all. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We got a notice at the highway committee meeting that there's a public involvement meeting, which is going to be held, uh, I believe, August 26th. Uh, that's on uh, Wednesday, and it's going to be held from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Manasha Public Library. They're going to talk and give us some information on uh, improving uh, Highway 10 to 114 there along that stretch. Uh, and uh, anybody that would like to, just so you know that there's a meeting that day and it's going to be put on by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that portion of the meeting will be closed. Uh, the county executives are approval of the proceedings from July 21st, 2015 meeting. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any additions or corrections? Supervisor Eisen, would you push your button? You got to push your light, please. I did, but it didn't work. Push it. Oh, there I am. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to make reference to resolution number one nine three seven two oh one five uh page one hundred and sixty two uh authorizing the hiring of uh, context and uh the minutes did not reflect the fact that i made an effort to amend that resolution such that the expense would not to exceed ninety five thousand dollars that amendment or uh, attempt to amend uh, did not receive a second and I would like to ask the clerk to reflect in the minutes that uh, I made that effort to uh, amend it 
to cap the expense on that particular contract that the county makes with a provider of services that nobody wanted to cap? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will take care of it. With those corrections, all in favor of the approval of the proceedings from July 21st? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Doesn't that require a second, Mr. Chairman? I thought there was, but okay. Is there a second for that? I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to approve the proceedings from July 21st. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Coney Executives Report. Tonight, subject to the board of approval, I am appointing a new administrator of Parkview Health Center. It's Malia Kuehler, and uh, Malia is a graduate of UW Eau Claire. She, she is fined fifty dollars. Uh, she has experience with uh, multiple private sector nursing homes. And Marlia is in the back of the room. Uh, perhaps she could come up to the mic just to, to let you see who she is. And we interviewed numerous people, and, and Marlia was our, our first choice. So if. Well, thank you everyone for having me here. I am very excited with your approval, of course, to be the new leader at Parkview. Um, as Mark was saying, I come with some really great qualifications, and I'm very excited to get started. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Do, I think we need a motion and... It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, I just have one other short item. Uh, many of you that are on town boards are aware that there's an issue with uh, requests for tax refunds from cable companies. It turns out that several years ago there was a change in the personal property tax that exempted their assets. Um, and it's turning out to be a fairly substantial amount. It takes about $4 million dollars of tax base away from the city of Oshkosh and additional amounts from the other communities including most of the towns um, and they are requesting a refund from a prior year so presumably when that process runs its course to the extent that any cities or towns refund the entire tax bills uh, the county will then have to reimburse those cities and towns for the county portion, as will the school district and the tech school and the other entities. Um, and basically, it's a law that changed perhaps six years ago, and uh, the cable companies apparently became aware of it more recently and now are seeking refunds and seeking to avoid the personal property tax on all their equipment. Um, so we'll work through that, um, but it's always something. <laughs> so. Um, with that, unless uh, board members have questions, that's the end of my report tonight. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Keel had asked to be excused from tonight's meeting. Uh, I would like you to the board's approval to appro uh, appoint George Eigner of 931 Park Ridge Ave, Oshkosh, to the county board, and Supervisor er, and Supervisor District 24 to Mike Brooks, 2829 Westmore Road, of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Also moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Carried. At this time, I'd like to ask the two of them to come up, and we'll swear them in. Okay, raise your right hands and then repeat after me. Uh, you have to say your name. I, George Eigner. 
Aye, George Edgar. Having been appointed to the Office of County Board Dis Supervisor District 13. Having been appointed to the Office of County Supervisor of District 13. And 14. Having been appointed to the County Board District 14. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution, support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Of the state of Wisconsin. And will faithfully. And will faithfully and, and impartially, and impartially and discharge the duties, discharge the duties of said office, of said, of said office, office to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. ability. So help me God. So, so help me God. God. Thank you. Well, we got a hundred dollars now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. At this time, I'd like to ask Peter Mall, the airport director, to come up. He's going to give us a presentation on Taxiway B reconstruction project. Do we have an easel? Thank you very much. There it goes. Okay, thanks very much for this opportunity. Uh, just want to update uh, the county board on this uh, project, uh, reconstruction project of Taxway Bravo. Uh, if you recall back at the April 21st uh, meeting of the county board, uh, the county board did approve a resolution which uh, approved the uh, sponsor funding uh, for this uh, uh, taxway reconstruction project. It was a $6.5 million project, if you recall. Uh, FAA is paying 90% of that project through uh, airport improvement project funds at the FAA. The state DOT would pay 5%, and Winnebago County, the sponsor, would pay 5% also, which comes to $325,000. Uh, in a part of that project also the city of Oshkosh is putting in a sewer line from Knapp Street onto airport property over to uh, 23rd Street and hook up there uh, so that they can relieve some of the uh, stormwater uh, pressure off of uh, 20th Street uh, uh, the sewer on that uh, portion of the road so it eliminates some of the flooding that goes on in that portion of the city uh, the city of Oshkosh is paying their total uh, part of the project uh, and it's not considered as part of the uh, funding for this uh, total project. The reason for my update is that the uh, FAA has uh, been a little slow in responding to our uh, uh, request for funding. Uh, plans uh, for the project were submitted to the FAA Airport District Office in Chicago on June of this year for review. Uh, the FAA at that time uh, reviewed the uh, specs, also reviewed the entire project, and uh, at that point decided that they, we should, Winnebago County and the state DOT should uh, adhere to the FAA uh, design standards and the FAA specs for the project. Uh, for 20 years or so, the uh, state DOT in working on their projects and designing the airports around the state uh, have used a separate set of specs that was FAA approved at one point. However, the uh, uh, they felt at this point, and we're not the only state, by the way, who is going through this process uh, of change, is that they should adhere to the uh, FAA standards of design now. Nothing was added to the project on our end. Uh, there are some changes, however, to the project uh, that uh, I needed to, I felt I should need to make the board aware of. Number one, uh, most of the turning radiuses on the uh, taxiways off the runway are changed now. The design spec, uh, instead of a gentle curving uh, turn off, off of, with the concrete off the runway into taxiways and other taxiways onto uh, parallel taxiways or now be, uh, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's more of a squared off turn to allow larger turning radiuses for larger aircraft. Um, 
Recycled pavement material. We've also in the past have used extensively recycled material. For instance, on runway 1836, when we reconstructed that, we ground up the uh, concrete and used that as a base for the project, thereby saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in that process. The FAA does not uh, recognize that practice. They feel that the virgin material is much better, so that added to the cost of the project. Uh, the FAA directed the uh, Wisconsin DOT Bureau of Aeronautics to solicit bids while we're going through the change, even though we argued that uh, the bids may be invalid once the uh, true costs come out. So, But uh, they insisted that we do that. We did uh, put out bids, a uh, bid package, and uh, we had a number of companies respond to that uh, through the Bureau of Aeronautics. Uh, the FAA also requested that the uh, lighting change project on uh, runway 927 be taken out of the project because in their mind they viewed that as a different uh, non-conforming part of uh, taxiway reconstruction so we had to take that out. And that was about a $600,000 uh, part of the project for us. So, And uh, last but not least the FAA was unwilling uh, to fund more than $4.1 million in the entire uh, port or the entire project at this point anyway uh, and they dictated that the project be split into two phases so phase one if funding is forthcoming would be done this fall and uh, phase two would be done next fall after air venture and we're doing that because there's so much uh, movement of uh, soil we didn't want aircraft being taxied onto uh, grass areas that are uh, uh, unstable at that point because we don't want to uh, bury any aircraft in the mud so Again, there's uh, now two phases to the project, which adds to the cost of the project. Uh, as I mentioned before, $6.5 million was the uh, projected cost. We're up to about $7 million now. Uh, City of Oshkosh is still paying for their portion of the uh, sewer project on the airport. It has, uh, it's not included in the total cost of the project. So that way, the FAA will pay, still pay 90% at $6.3 million. State DOT will pay 5%. Uh, 350,000 and Winnebago County uh, our portion now will be 350,000 so an additional $25,000 at that point uh, again it's an estimate because we don't know what the true costs are going to be if uh, when phase two uh, is bid out and that'll be sometime next uh, spring early summer so uh, I did bring along a uh, diagram of what the phasing is going to look like uh, the entire project was uh, scheduled to be the entire uh, area here on the parallel runway 927 in the red. Uh, now, if, if we're uh, able to get funding for phase one this fall, and the FAA said they are hoping to award funding the first week of September. However, we have concerns that uh, there may not be enough time in construction season-wise to complete phase one, so we may have to reject the funding and wait till next uh, fall for phase one and then shift phase two to 2017. Anyway, the, uh, the plan at this point, if there is enough funding and if there is enough time, we would do phase one, which is the western portion in the yellow here, and also phase uh, the eastern portion, rather, from taxiway alpha east uh, to the railroad tracks and the property line. And then phase two would be the center portion that would be done in uh, 2016 if, uh, again, if funding is available this fall. So, uh, again, as I mentioned, the uh, FAA has uh, delayed funding uh, multiple projects throughout the uh, country, and not just, uh, just us. In fact, we found out uh, several weeks ago that we were number 49 on the list in the Great Lakes region. So there's a chance we may not get funding, and there's a chance we may. So we're not sure yet. We're waiting for that uh, word from them. So questions? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So what uh, the city of Oshkosh, you said, is going to be paying for uh, some storm sewer. What's the cost of that? Uh, the total cost of that is, I believe, 2.4 million, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 2.4. Oh, boy, that's a pretty good piece of change. Yeah, they budgeted for that. Uh, we found that there were uh, economies of scale, if you will, uh, by combining the two projects. The city, I guess it is paying for their portion. They're actually paying some of the engineering fees, too, as part of the project. So in a sense, both, both of us are coming out ahead. Yes, and that's going to take some water off of 20th Avenue, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, we've had trouble there for as <laughs> long as I can remember. True.
Zulu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Peter, if I understood you correctly, you said that we've split into two phases now. Yes. Hopefully this fall and hopefully next fall at 4.1 million each. It would be 4.1 million this fall, and then about 2 million, two and a half, two to two and a half in next phase. Okay. Phase two. And you mentioned something about they kicked out some lighting that you had yes. had in the original proposal? That is correct, yes. Can we expect that you'll be coming back asking for that in the near future? In the, in the future, yeah. We, it will be, what we have to do is work with the Bureau of Aeronautics on another uh, project. Uh, package, if you will. So it will be, I'm guessing, at least at the earliest next year, maybe maybe a year after that. We have to go through the, what we're going to do is do a new petition now with the, uh, probably with the Bureau of Aeronautics. So so instead of six and a half million, we're probably looking at eight million total? Right now we're looking at, depending on what the estimates come in at for phase two, which we don't have a really firm handle on yet, because of cost change costs with materials and whatnot, it'll uh, we're looking at about seven million right now total cost for the entire project. Plus the six hundred and some thousand for the lighting. No, that would be a, a totally separate project. But I mean, right? I mean, it was in the original. Yes. If it's separated out, if you add right. it in, right, it's going to be close to eight million. No, at the tail end, you did say something about whether or not it would be, the funds would be approved for this fall. Correct. And at the last aviation meeting, you indicated that it may not happen. That's Do you have correct. any update on that? No, in fact, this morning I called the uh, Bureau of Aeronautics, our engineer down there, and he said we're still unsure. The FAA's last, uh, last correspondence with them was that uh, at the earliest they would know first week of September if there's. And at that last committee meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, you were committee people, um, someone had been selected to do the work? Correct, yes. And there is the no official award, though. Right. You know, it's, it's just selected. They're, they're someone, I believe, on the committee asked the question, do we have to notify them? Does the county have to notify them by a certain date that, oops, we're not going to do it this year? That's up to the Bureau of Aeronautics. Their Bureau is actually our agent for, the, for all of our projects. So they, okay. it'd be so up to them it's to it's not our it. issue. No, it's not our issue. No. Thank you. I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mel, could you could you uh, outline for us uh, a breakout of the plan for the project? Uh, obviously, if we're not going to get uh, six million dollars or uh, seven million dollars we're probably not going to do the project uh, on the tax levy basis Correct. Uh, what what is the level of uh, necessity for this I know it is uh, in the uh, 2015-19 capital projects book yes uh, it's been raised from uh, the $5,500, uh, 55, $5, mm -hmm. uh that was uh, allocated for uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's in two phases. Uh, what's, the, what's the game plan for uh, approaching the need okay. uh, for uh, keeping that runway uh, in the condition uh, that we need to have it okay. uh, for the extensive use uh, that is given to that runway, in particular okay. uh, during EAA. Sure. Uh, first of all, the uh, the funding actually did come from uh, the county's uh, undesignated fund balance. Uh, there was a there was a motion to uh, amend the resolution when it came up, and it was approved, so that uh, 325,000 was coming from the county's undesignated fund balance, not airport but county anyway um in terms of the pavement itself it uh there are sections that are near failing uh, it's an asphalt surface uh, there are numerous large cracks in it uh, uh, some other uneven areas that uh, cause problems for taxiing aircraft uh, for in terms of air venture time it's it was one of our most used uh, taxi routes 
uh, especially for larger aircraft. Some of the, the smaller or light uh, single engine aircraft will taxi in the grass uh, alongside it. But uh, for a larger aircraft, we have to have that for. Well, if we're unable to secure uh, FAA and uh, state funding, mm -hmm. uh, what part of that uh, uh, project uh, are we able to uh, uh, fund ourselves adequately to uh, at least uh, get us through uh, another couple seasons? Right. Uh, I guess, in my opinion, we'd have to uh, go back with the uh, engineers. Okay, yeah, sorry. We'd have to go back with our engineers from the Bureau and from Omni Associates to make sure that we don't need to do a, a, a makeshift fix, maybe a, a lay, an overlay of uh, a thin layer of asphalt just to keep it in condition for another year or two. I don't believe we'd have to do that. Uh, it's not at the point yet where it's going to uh, substantially uh, cause problems for taxi and aircraft. But uh, if it goes beyond next year, Obviously, then we would have to make sure that we do something in the process. That uh, that would be a uh, project probably funded through the Bureau of Aeronautics rather than the FAA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maybe you've kind of answered this, but with the funding being pushed back, what would happen if we never got phase two? Well, the, the beauty of it is that uh, if the FAA funds phase one, they're going to fund phase two. They've pretty much, they have to once it's a project like that is started. So. Okay. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I just got a couple of quickies. Um, Peter, I keep hearing about the project, the project. Actually, who was in charge? Who set up this project that now we're having problems? It would be uh, it's a joint project between us and the Bureau of Aeronautics and the FAA. So we have every three years we do a pavement analysis through the Bureau of Aeronautics. And uh, they identified this uh, reconstruction as a worthy project. The FAA concurred. But in the meantime, there are other projects that came down the FAA's pipeline, basically. Well, that. that I could understand, you know, yeah. who's ever on first, second will come yeah. behind. But then, you know, you're, you're talking about we have to get this done and you got to do a certain corner type for large aircrafts. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have large aircrafts. Where will you be getting these aircrafts from that they're going to be large? Well, actually, the design standards as they were before, as they exist now, really don't handle uh, aren't designed for the type of aircraft they're using it now. We have larger corporate aircraft that do use that taxiway. Uh, if, you f if you follow the center line with the nose gear directly in precisely, okay. then the main landing gear is coming close to the edge. That's why and we're The next question, and I'll be up front, I don't have a problem with it if this is legit. Um, our total cost, if I understood you correctly, it's only really be about $375,000. County. Correct. County taxpayers' dollars. That's it. Right. Correct. All right. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To piggyback on the previous questions, the change in the design standards, mm -hmm. when was that change in the design standards actually made? That was, uh, I believe, earlier this year. It was about the time that we submitted our plans to the FAA, uh, or I should say the Bureau of Aeronautics submitted the plans to the Bureau, to the FAA rather, I'm sorry. So the, um, you know, I've got a copy of the design standards uh, prior to that, and that's, you know, it's dated. There are updates to it at, as late as last year. And uh, right now I've, uh, I haven't gotten a copy of the new ones, but they do indicate um, those type of changes to the project, any project throughout the U.S. So they were almost, they were almost simultaneous. Correct. There, are, yeah, I've talked to a number of other airport directors who are going through the same problem. In fact, there are two of them, two airports in Wisconsin right now that have uh, refused their funding because they're not ready, because now they have to go back, redesign, get new cost estimates. So, thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could you uh, provide us the uh, liberty of uh, having uh, Mr. Mall give us a quick overview of the successful uh, 2015 EAA experience? I know I visited and it was quite a bonanza. Thank you. Also, I'd like to announce that in the back, we got some future board members. Uh, we got the Boy Scouts from Troop 618 are doing a special project, I believe, to get some credit, to get their badges. So we have welcomed our board. Okay, go ahead. Hey, good evening. Um, I've been asked to come back to the county board and um, discuss a project that's been in the work for about the last 18 months to two years. Um, it's a capital project that we have that was looking at repairing or replacing the windows in the courthouse here. Um, 18 months ago, I think it was, I came forward and did the presentations on the condition of the windows. They are the original 1938 windows. Not much has been done to them. They are glazed into metal frames and over the years, over the decades, the weather has taken their toll on them. Um, the metal has started to deteriorate and we're, we're, we're needing to find a solution to what we can do with the windows. So about 18 months ago, I came forward and I asked for um, this capital project to be started. And what was approved was funding for a study to look at what options we had for the windows. And one of the unique things with this is we had to take a look at what options we had because this building is a historical building. It's listed on the National Register, so there are criteria that we need to do to be able to fix the windows and maintain the um, historical aesthetics of the building. So. Once again, 1938 windows, it was probably the best that they could do in 1938, really not what we do nowadays for, for window um, design. They're single pane, not very en energy efficient. The frames themselves are, they're not really weather stripped like normal windows that you would see at your house. So they allow air flow to come into the buildings, really pretty cold. Um, the, air, the, the metal frames, have corroded and they've deteriorated. And if, if you know anything about metal, so it's a process called delamination where actually the metal becomes um, like a ream of paper and it starts swelling and, and layers of it will peel off. And what's happened is the metal started to do that and it starts press, pressing in and putting the, the glass under pressure and it will start breaking the windows without anything being thrown at them or anything like that. So if you walk outside of the building, you'll, you can take a look at um, on the Algoma Boulevard side up in the black glass, you can actually see some of the panes are cracked and they've separated a little bit. So we have a number of windows that are broken that we need to replace. Because of the building being historical, in the 70s when we had the energy crisis, my predecessor came along and they put storm windows on, on the inside of the windows. You can't really put them on the outside because that detracts from the historical significance. So they're on the inside of the building and they were put in there to minimize the cold air transfer and to try and make it a little bit more energy efficient. Actually, what we found is because the storm windows were put on and the way they were put on and their construction and the way the building's built, having the um, storm windows on the inside actually contributed to the problem. If you take a look at some of the windows around the courthouse, you'll notice that the wood in between the storm windows and the outside windows are basically showing signs of being wet from the condensation that got in there. And we really can't get in there to fix it or seal it or anything else. 
So that's actually kind of sped up the deterioration of the windows that we've had from the inside. Like I said, the National Park Service has special rules on how we have to address with these windows. We hired a consultant called Wiss Janie Elsner. They are based out of uh, Milwaukee and Madison, and they are, I um, don't want to call them experts, but they're very well versed in historical preservation. Right now, they are involved in a number of historical restoration projects, and they are the architect that's working on the restoration of the state capitol. They came in and they looked at our conditions, documented what they found, explored the building structure to determine what could be done. And they came up with three options that we've got. And the options ranged from, and these are construction costs, from $740,000 to $1,015,000. Option one is to just remove the glass that we've got, replace the glass, clean up the frames, paint them again, put back in single pane um, glass. And this would be just as the way the building was built in 1938. And that would be $740,000. Option two is to remove the glass, repair, repaint the flames, put the single pane glass back in, and put new storm windows on the inside of the building. This would replicate what we've got right now. And that cost is $915,000. And these are just estimates yet. Option three is to remove the single pane windows, clean up the frames, paint the frames, modify the window frames so that we could put in thermal pane pieces of glass rather than the single pane glasses. And that would leave the look of the windows the same and be virtually indistinguishable from the street that we've done anything to the windows. This is the most costly one and the estimates $1,015,000. So, you know, I looked at these and we've got pros and cons for every option. For option one, which is just doing what was done in 1938, it's the least expensive one initially. And it's also the most historically accurate. It would be just like the building was in 1938. But we'd also have all the problems that we had in 1938 or since then. It's not energy efficient. And what we would end up having is just like your homes with single pane windows, when it's cold outside, we're gonna have condensation running on all these windows, which then means that we would probably have to have some of our staff making tours of the building during the time that we we're getting the condensation, wiping down the windows and wiping up the water so that we're not having the wood get damaged um, and the window frames starting to rust again. So that's one of the big downsides. Also the occupants, would go back to complaining about we're getting the drafts from the windows. The windows can be closed tight, but because of the massive amounts of glass that we've got, it's just going to be the normal convection of cold air coming down from the windows onto the people that are working in the offices. Option two, which is replacing the windows and having the interior storm windows, it's mid-priced. You know, it's right in the middle. And it's just as energy efficient as we've got right now. The cons are, it's going to be continuing the practice that we've got when we have to wash these windows. We end up having to have somebody remove what we can from the storm windows so that they can get between the two to wash the windows. We've done it in the past where we've just washed the inside of the, the storm windows and the outside of the building, but it just looks like you're looking through smoke in between the two. So, you know, it's really not a good solution. Option three. That's where we replace the glass, the single pane glass with thermal pane sections of glass. This would be the most energy efficient solution that we've got. For all intents and purposes, it would look just like we are right now without the storm windows. If you're down on the street, you wouldn't be able to tell what we've done with the windows. It would also be the least cost operation. We'd be saving on utilities and we'd be saving on the cost it would be to get the windows washed. And we wash the windows, we try to do them once a year. Um, some of the occupants, I don't know, Sue might say we should probably do them more than once a year because um, they get dirty pretty quick. The cons are, it's the most expensive of the three, three options that we've got. What I tried to do is put this into perspective and I said, 
okay, you know, if we just look at the first hour costs, it's pretty clear which one is the least expensive. But if we have to look at how much it's going to cost us over the long run, and for this point, I took 10 years, because if we bond for this, the length of the bond is 10 years. And I looked, on, I looked at this, and basically, to let you know, for this building, we pay $115,549 in utility costs a year. So if we take a look at the single pane windows, with the additional costs, with, with the initial cost of $740,000, if we lose the inside storm windows, we're probably going to lose, I'm estimating, 10% of our energy costs. So over 10 years, that's going to cost us another $115,000. The labor that I'd be looking at trying to go and clean up all the condensation over the winter, I'm figuring two hours per person, five days a week. We're not coming on the weekends, so there's probably going to be something happening over the weekends that we're going to have to take care of again on Mondays. I'm looking at about $4,400 a year labor costs. Over 10 years, that's $44,000. So if you look at the 10-year cost, we're looking at about $2.1 million. If we look at the second option, where we have the inside storm windows, that initial cost is $915,000. Our utility cost is going to be the same, so I don't gain anything there. But I'm estimating it's going to cost us about $3,700 a year in additional labor costs or bid costs to get the windows washed with the storm windows on the inside. So that's $37,500 over 10 years. So. Option one, just to recap, I came up with an estimate of about $2.14 million cost over 10 years. Option two, with the interior storm windows, I came up with a cost of about $2.19 million. Option three, which was an original $1 million cost for the windows, we'd, I'm estimating we might save 10% of our utility costs, which means $115,000 comes off over 10 years. We have no additional labor to wash the windows because they can get both sides without any additional labor. We have no cost due to condensation because they're thermal panes and we shouldn't be getting condensation. That cost comes out to $2.14 million also. So basically, if, you, if I extend it all the way out, over a 10-year period, it's about $1,500 less expensive to go with the thermal pane windows than it is to go with the single pane windows, which would be probably a better fix long term. And like I said, these are just kind of based on some of my estimates. Um, and right now my recommendation would be is that we go with option number three. So what I'd be looking for is at the next county board meeting coming forward to you with a fund request transfer for the, um, the total cost of the project with the design costs and some contingency, contingency costs and the construction costs for $1.2 million to replace the windows in the courthouse. If anybody has any questions. Supervisor Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike, um, you said the, the uh, energy savings would be about 10% over the life of this, 10 years. Right. How did you come up with that? Well, I just took um, our cost for natural gas and utility and electricity is $115,000. 10% of that's $11,500. Multiply that by 10 years, that's $115,000. But, but how did you pick 10%, I meant? Swag. I mean, is that, is that a, a common projected savings when you do something like that? That's conservative savings. Conservative, um, okay. Basically, they've said more than 10%, yeah. but I'm not confident in telling you 10%. Okay. Because um, I think it would be more than 10 percent. It could be. I'm hoping it would be. Um, basically, over the last 10 years, I'm trying to get this straight because I'm going from memory. Just our energy measures that we've done, we've cut our utility costs by about 25 percent. So, you know, I'm hoping we'd be able to get 10 percent or better with these windows. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt the thermal pain will increase the efficiency there. So, okay, thank right. you. Supervisor Ellis. Mike, uh, you, you're talking about the frames and you're talking about, you know, you've got windows that are cracking. 
Right. Are our frames going to be good enough to put the thermal paint in? All of them on? The engineers are looking at that we can clean them up and do some repairs to them, and they should be good enough to, to accept the thermal panes. Um, what they're looking at is that the damage, the, the expansion of the metal is really more, um, it looks worse than it is, the, the amount of metal that's wasted away, because it doesn't take a lot of pressure on glass to crack it. No, I know that. So yes, they think we can do that. Okay. Supervisor Konitsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have answered some of my questions to Supervisor Ellis here. But now we're still going to have to paint the outsides of those windows. Correct. Okay. We'd have to paint them on all of them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Zoning reports and ordinances. Linda and Ronald Wackels. Town of Nakaimai, a, uh, a mandatory ordinance number 0801155, zoning to A2 for tax parcel number 0120622 and 0120621. Supervisor Keller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of a mandatory ordinance number 080115. Second. Then moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 19582 or 82015, commendation for Barbara Paulus, Supervisor Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for resolution number 1958215. Barbara Paulus has been a devoted employee of Parkview Health Center since December 1, 2004. She started her employment in the food service department before transitioning into the nursing department as a certified nursing assistant in 2008, and she retired on August 3, 2015. Barb enjoyed her time spent with the residents and excelled at caring for residents with cognitive impairments. Bob, Barb's dedication to Parkview and its residents was much appreciated. We thank her for her service and wish her well in retirement. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 196 8 2015. Disallow the claim of Andrea Wilson, Supervisor Rasmussen. Thank you. Move for resolution number 196 8 2015. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution 197-8-2015, disallow claim of Charles Storino, Supervisor Rasmussen. Move for resolution number 197-8-2015. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 198-8-2015, disallow the claim of Smith Thieler. Supervisor Rasmussen. Move for resolution number 198-8-2015. Been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 199-8-2015. Transfer 115000 from the debt service, debt service fund balance to the principal payment account for additional principal on debt payment due during 2015. Supervisor Rasmussen. Thank you. I move for resolution number 199-8-2015. But moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 200-8-2015. Approve a project to repair the outside wall of the UW Fox Valley Library at a cost of 216000 and transfer 108000 to the project from the contingency fund to cover the Winnebago County share of the project. Supervisor Widener. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of resolution number 200-82015. Second. Been moved and seconded. Supervisor Hegg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to the title of the resolution, where is this money coming from? The contingency fund? Chuck? Yes. Which contingency fund? The general fund. The general contingency fund. Okay, and, and what is the current balance of the general? Mm. I'm sorry, I don't have it with me. 16 million, 15? <laughs> no. We budget, I, think, I believe it's $300,000 a year as a, as a line item in the budget called the contingency fund. And that, yeah, that's why I asked because I know that there are several different contingency funds. So. Yeah. I mean, the big balance that you're talking about is the general fund undesignated fund balance. But this is a line item in the budget that we put in every year to cover unanticipated expenses. Right. And that's why I asked the question to okay. follow up because you said the general fund. So Okay. All in favor, favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oppose, carried. Supervisor Robel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move that we adjourn until Tuesday, September 1st at 6 p.m. for a special order of business. Second. Meeting. Then moved and seconded. We are adjourned. <laughs>